A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Um, I want to say before I start reading the book that I um, watch the TV series. I mentioned in previous videos, but I'm completely up to date with the TV series and therefore my view of the book might be slightly hindered by what I already know and things like that. So part of this might be in connection with and part is just going to be the book standalone. But um, just a, like a real review of just the book, a written one, I will link below all my Goodreads page review thing. It's right below in the description. So if you'd rather just read something purely on the book, feel free. This will be a bit more of a mix, I think, um, how was I took the book personally instead. There you go. So, um, as I said, so the book itself is, is really good. I really, really enjoyed the book, but it's, it's really complicated. And so I think personally, though I don't normally say this, I'm actually glad I watched the TV series first because it gave me an idea of the characters and the world and some things already so when names were mentioned I already had a brief understanding of who it was meant to be because there's so many names that like I struggle now naming all the main characters and I'm quite a way in to the show and I've read the whole of the first book and I still couldn't name you all the characters I still could struggle to name you most of the main characters let alone all the characters so in some ways I'm glad I watched it first because it gave me an idea because I think if I just picked this up and started reading it I would have no idea who anyone was, all the names which kind of get lost to me. Apart from the ones obviously they, they use as chapter titles because I don't know if you knew but in the book, the book is split so each chat instead of like chapter title, chapter number it's just the character name of the point of view for that chapter is going to be. So whose story we're following in that chapter is basically the only difference otherwise I would have no idea who any of the characters are. So I'm kind of glad I watched the TV series first. Um, but also because I watched it first, that did kind of hinder it. I knew exactly what the plot was going to be, especially as this book pretty much stays very true to the TV series. Like, I was reading it, and I could have literally told you where the TV episode started and where it ended and how it carried on. Like, I could have even done before the title scene started and then done the title scene. And then it was almost like it was very, very closely adapted, which, as you know, would please me. So, yeah... Um, I knew exactly what was going to happen, so I thought like that kind of killed some of the suspense for me a bit. I was more reading about stuff because the world interests me instead of knowing, oh, I wonder what's going to happen to them next, because I knew. Um, so I did. Uh, that might have been why it took me so long to read it as well, because I think this has been a month now I've been reading this book, which uh, I know it probably would, would have been. It's over 700 pages, it's a long book, and it's hard going, it's hard to plough through, but thoroughly enjoyable and worth the challenge, I think. Um, to give a quick synopsis to anyone that hasn't read the books or watched the TV series, I don't really know where you've been, it seems to be everywhere at the moment. But in case you haven't, um, basically the book follows the, the Seven Kingdoms and it starts off when the Baratheons are in the throne and the Baratheon, um, Robert Baratheon, who is the king, is married to Cersei Lannister, who is the queen, so the Lannisters also have quite an input into the ruling of the world. And then the other real main house, I think, you, well the other two main houses are the Targaryens, who the Baratheons beat for the throne, and now there's only two remaining Targaryens alive who have been, like, they're not in the Seven Kingdoms, they're living abroad, they kind of fled, and then you have the Starks, the Wardens of the North. They're the main, there's loads of other houses, but they're the main four that the book really focuses on. And so you have the world of them and just basically the interplay for the throne because, well, there's power, men either crave it or fear it, and it kind of, it kind of all intertwines, so that even though the kingdom is technically not at war it still feels like it's kind of war time everyone's kind of secretly deceiving each other and stabbing each other in the back and everyone's very much out for themselves and the people that aren't don't tend to do so well um yeah i don't want to give any spoilers but i will say it does live up to its name like any character can die there is no ruling about like don't go into it thinking oh this person's really pivotal to this plot they're not going to die you People die left, right and centre throughout this book. And it's quite realistic to life, really. I quite like that people do just randomly die mid-story because that happens sometimes. It's got it's just, it's just got so much going for it. I love the political interwork, interworking. I love the world and the way it's described and the, all the characters' dynamics and how every single character is unique, both male and female, which I do quite like. It's, it's quite rare, I think, for a book. I'm not, I'm not just going like a, a feminine angle, I'm just saying in general, there's so many characters and every single one is so distinctly different from the other. Like there's some draw similarities to each other, but they're all so distinctly different that it's it's really nice. 
And as like she is a female character, all the female characters in this are strong female characters. And I don't mean in the sense of like the whole oh they they kick ass and they they bitches and they they're really just sort of on it. And, and some of them are, but some of them aren't at all. Some of them are very stereotypically feminine, and some are quite. Um, they just there's a massive range like there's some really clever ones some really pretty ones some really sort of active sporty ones people from high above people from low what i mean by strong is they're really well developed which i quite liked and they have more than one trait they're not just pretty they're not just clever they're not just deceitful they're not just evil like everybody's three-dimensional is what i'm basically the long way around of saying that both male and female everyone's three-dimensional everyone's really unique and so you get a really rich tapestry of characters and nobody is distinctively good or distinctively bad and that's also quite nice because it's it makes it quite realistic it's kind of like there's both good and bad on both sides of the wall kind of thing so it creates a real diversity in characters and fan bases for characters that they have because they both do really all the characters do really stupid things that you consider a bad thing to do or even an evil thing to do and some characters do really good like really nice things really good things really clever things and it varies there's no distinctive trend there are a couple of characters that you you're gonna hate um there's some i think that are just universally hated but most characters i think it's a very they're very mixed and it makes it very interesting to read about. So I love that. I love the mythical creatures and the fantasy element that the stuff they really play down on, like the magic and the dragons and the um uh like the world beyond the wall and sort of the, the allusion to giants and things like that. So it's not just a bit like if you're quite into fantasy to the extreme with all the mythical creatures and the magic, it's in there. But if you also want a fantasy book that's less about sort of magic and mythical creatures and just this sort of fantasy kingdom and more about knights and sword fighting and political playing kingdoms and fighting for the throne that's also there it's all perfectly it's just a really good book um so yeah i would give it an 8 out of 10 because i did think it's a fabulous book my only criticisms would be the length and the complexity of it um even though I said the complexity is something that makes it fantastic, it also makes it hard going to read. Like, I have got the sequel, but I'm not going to jump into it straight away because I'm not sure I'd be able to go straight from this to the next one because it's so heavy going. So it's it's kind of like, it's a real uphill struggle and challenge, but really rewarding at the same time. That's kind of what this book is. It's not an easy read. You don't, it's not relaxing. And it's it's quite like, you get, you get gripped straight away. But it's not a book you can just sit and read. You have to take breaks. It's very in-depth and complicated. And you're thrown in pretty much right into the middle of things, into this period of time. So you're not, nothing's really explained to you, like, at the beginning. You kind of have to pick a lot of the stuff up as you go along. Which in some ways is really nice and quite realistic. Because it would be very weird and fragmented to have characters who live in this world trying to explain the world to each other. Because you don't, you don't explain the world you live in to each other. Because everyone kind of knows it because they live there. But... As a reader, that can make it quite complicated and you have to kind of pick up on the interworkings of the world that have happened previously just by reading it. So it's it's quite mentally taxing to read, I found, personally. Um, not particularly complex in language or anything. I don't think like it'd be too, it's a hard book to read in the sense of uh, the literature that's presented, just the plot itself. It's, it's so complicated. So I'd lose one mark for that because if I, I feel like I, I'd want... I would want a book a little bit maybe less complex, I don't know if that would ruin the book, but uh, that's my personal opinion. And two, just the length. It's just, it's really long. And I don't know, I know the other book was just going to get longer, so maybe, I don't know, maybe because I knew exactly what was going to happen, I felt the length of the book a lot more. Like, I was getting through some chapters and I thought, oh, I was like, I just want the next bit to happen. I think as I knew what was going to happen, I wanted to read my favourites in the series and um, the bits that I didn't enjoy so much in the series, the bits that I found st still are, or the storylines I didn't enjoy as much, I didn't want to read as much, I was kind of, I felt the length of it more. When the books start to vary from the series a bit more, um, as they progress, I might not mind the length as much or the complexity as much because I'll be learning new things and discovering new things if that makes sense so I won't be sitting there trying like anticipating and just wanting to get to my favorite parts because I won't know what's coming next and so I'll be anticipating the whole way through kind of thing for just something new to happen instead of reading bits that I'm really familiar with and sort of knew what was going to happen and knew the gist of it especially as I've watched season one a lot I keep playing with the book I'm sorry especially as I've watched season one a lot um, I think I've watched it like three times through now, so 
I kind of, I really know season one very well. So maybe the book two would be even higher rated, but that still does not mean I didn't enjoy this book. As I said, I gave it an eight out of 10. I think it's very well deserved. The whole world is very well constructed. I would recommend this to anybody that is looking for an adult fantasy book. Um, I feel like if, maybe don't read it if you're a younger reader, it's not really appropriate. Some of the stuff within it, it's not, but mm, it's a little bit graphic, but it's not extremely graphic. It's just like there's, there's a lot of death and sex scenes and things like that. So it's, it is an adult fancy book, you can tell. But I think if you're a mature teen, it'd be fine. Kind of go with the rating that they have for the series if you're looking to try to work out what sort of age rating this should be. The, I think the series captures it very well. <coughs> with what sort of age rating it should be, exactly, especially as it's pretty much the same. But there are some stuff in here that some, there are some mature themes and mature moments that maybe a younger reader should not be exposed to. For anybody that wants to get into a good adult fantasy series, this is the book I would highly recommend.